What is going on, guys? Welcome to Greggles TV Daily Rewind. This is really dark in my room right now, but it's relaxing, right? We're in a relaxing kind of mood. This week's tech news, because this is the you know the rewind show where we have seven days of tech news in one single video. We covered a lot of information on the new Galaxy phone that potentially will come out. It's a big yo-yo story. It will, it won't, it will, it won't. So you definitely want to follow through the whole entire video. There's also information on the Galaxy S22 line of phones and how it potentially is not going to be a huge upgrade. Information on the new iPhones and then everything else in between. Enjoy this week and we'll see you in the next one. The first story of the day and only story news of the day is the Galaxy S22. Now we've kind of heard about this phone and the more I keep hearing about it, the less it seems like a you know gigantic upgrade and in some ways basically kind of seems like a very even keel kind of upgrade not exciting at all for the most part what we're hearing so far and so if you're thinking about i'll throw this out before we even talk about this it kind of if you're if you're on the fence about hey should i get the s21 or should i wait till january and get the s22 I think you'll probably be fine getting the S21. This S22 doesn't sound like an amazing upgrade. So with that said, let's kind of dive into some of this information we know, some we don't, so let's talk about it. This tweet's coming from Tron. Tron says that the S22 series, the latest development progress is no under display camera, which is not the end of the world because the under display camera is not that great anyway. The smaller display size for the S22 and the S22 Plus. So those sizes are gonna be 6.06 and 6.55. So a little bit smaller than the S21 series. The 6.81 inch will be on the S22 Ultra to maximize disparity between the Plus and the Ultra models. Also, there's an overall downgraded spec in the S22 Plus compared to the S21 Plus, and it doesn't go fully into detail about that, but it does also say that there's a high possibility of the Snapdragon 898 in Korea, and will be finally decided at the very last moment due to, due to low yield discussing about equipping it with the Exynos 2200 only in the Ultra model. So a lot of, you know, a couple of takeaways from there is that it sounds like they're trying to create a bigger disparity uh, between the S21 Plus or S22 Plus and the S22 Ultra. If you remember from the past, those phones are relatively almost the same size. One had a 1080p P Plus screen, one had 2K Plus screen. So it sounds like they're kind of making, trying to make a little bit more of a difference between those phones. Also in there, it looks like everybody or most people might end up with the Snapdragon 898 due to low yields of the Exynos 2200. Again, might not be a big deal, might be a big deal to you, but it is some things to know about the S22 line is that not looking like a huge upgrade. Um, I don't know, it just doesn't look like exciting. It's like Samsung's playing, playing it pretty safe with specs lately on some of these phones, uh, taking away from cameras on the on the folding line, taking from uh, not, you know, and I, I think it's really to create a lower price overall for some of these devices so that it's more attractive to the consumer at the end of the day, because maybe the average consumer doesn't really think about big, big specs. Let's jump into the tech news. We are literally about a week away officially now from Apple announcing, launching their new iPhones and other products as well. Why do we know this? Because they officially came out today and said that we're California streaming on September 14th. See you real soon. Jo uh, Greg Joswick, who is the SVP, I think, of Apple. And uh, he uh, the, the, obviously Apple announced it. So September 14th, they're going to announce a bunch of new products. And speaking of those products, we have a couple of tweets here to make things a little bit easier for ourselves. So Joshua Swingle got this stuff from Pine Leaks and he put it into this nice little tweet. So let's follow along the tweet. Tons of iPhone 13 info from Pine Leaks ahead of the Apple event next week so there are going to be no price hikes on the phone the prices will remain the same it seems on the iphones across the board you're going to get increased weight and thickness hey i'm down with that 120 hertz on the pro slash max versions of this phone which is great that's going to match up with what samsung does on their phones and a bunch of other people do as well night mode recognizes stars Kind of cool, right? So when you take night photos, you'll be able to recognize the stars. All cameras capture at least 15% more light, so you should get more bright photos. Ultra wide captures 40% more light. All of that sounds great. Now, what about battery details? So battery details, iPhone 13 mini, you're gonna get 
uh, about one hour extra battery life. The iPhone 13 Pro will get 10% larger battery, and then the Pro Max will get 18 to 20% larger battery. The Pro displays, that being the Pro and the Pro Max, uh, the display throttles to 60 hertz when it's in low power mode, and the iPhone 13 Pro battery may be worse because of that 120 hertz. Continuing on with the Apple event, here's some more information. This one's about the AirPods 3, and they're saying that the charging case will have a 20% larger battery, which is gonna give you better battery life overall. Wireless charging feature will come standard now with the regular iPod. AirPods 3, better bass and low ends, and also better uh, battery inside the AirPods 3 is on par with the AirPods Pro. So, you know, not a, uh, I think the Apple event's gonna be more of a nice little upgrade to the devices and it's not gonna blow you away in the end, at the end of the day. And that's kind of typical of what we've seen from Apple the last few years. So if you're an Apple fan, should you upgrade? Probably not. Will you upgrade? Probably. Will I get one? Yes, I have the 12 Pro Max, I'll get the 13 Pro Max. And really it's just because uh, videos out to my channel and things like that and more people are interested in the newer one versus the older one. Next up is about the Galaxy Note phone and some very, very sad news. I know for a lot of you people, a lot of you people are stuck on the Note 20, Note 20 Plus of that phone and you're like, I'm waiting for the Note 22 to come. It looks like the Galaxy Note phone and I've called it before, it looks like it's been discontinued. Why do I say this? Well, Samsung has put out, or not even put this out, but they have done a trademark, and they have four trademarks coming up, and this is in Korea, Galaxy S, Galaxy Z, Galaxy M, and Galaxy A, and the Galaxy Note phone uh, trademark is missing. So you can see right here, there's no Galaxy Note that's been trademarked. Doesn't mean that they won't, but you would think that if they were, it would be part of this right now. So that's why we're thinking the Galaxy Note can completely discontinued. But you gotta remember, Galaxy Z Fold 3 has S Pen support, Galaxy S21 Ultra has S Pen support. You can still buy one of the older Note phones, such as the Note 20, Note 20 uh, Plus, and those are still good phones. And then you would expect even more phones will have better S Pen support as things go on. So this isn't the end of the world, but it is seemingly the end of the Note phone. Let's jump into our one story today, and it's a big one because the iPhone 13 is literally weeks away, like a couple of weeks away before we know about it and then ultimately can pre-order it and actually have it in our hands. Like within probably about two or three weeks, all of that will be known and inside your hand. And it's not an exciting upgrade seemingly for what we know about the rumors. It's basically a plus version of the iPhone 11s and 12s and 13s. It's, they're basically all the same at this point. They're very, very similar phones iPhone 14 is gonna be completely different in a lot of ways. And uh, so if you don't wanna upgrade or you're on the edge about upgrading to the iPhone you know, 13 and you don't upgrade all the time, you might wanna wait out again to this iPhone 14 Pro Max because this is looking like a very cool, interesting phone, especially if you're on the Apple side. Samsung, Android side, you can be like, I already have all that stuff. I know, but we're talking about Apple people. So let's jump into the story. This was released, uh, released and leaked out by John Proser and front page, his website, Front Page Tech. And it's showing off the iPhone 14 Pro Max. And when you look at this phone, there's a bunch of things. So first of all, let's check out the front back here. So you can see on the front there, the notch is completely gone. No notch this year. They're going to a camera punch hole. And the face ID will probably lay underneath the display. So it'll still have a face ID, but it will lay underneath the display and then you'll have that front camera sitting on top of the display. The buttons on the left there are circular, if you're a fan of that. Next would be the back of the camera. Look at the back of that phone. You can see the cameras don't stick out at all. They're completely flush for the most part with the phone. So this is a big departure from what they've done in the past on their phones and everybody for that matter, for the last few years, everybody's cameras have stuck out ever so slightly, if not a lot, and iPhones have been no different. It looks like the iPhone 14 Pro Max will make them pretty much completely flush. At the bottom of the phone, you see the two speakers, but then you also see a lightning port. There was rumors that it was gonna be completely portless. You know, you would just have wireless charging, but it doesn't look like they're leaving that just yet. Even next year, they'll still have that same 
phone. And then here's some of the uh, renders made up of different colors. This, these colors aren't uh, completely true. It's basically him making up some of these colors, but it just gives you an idea what it possibly could like look like in different colors. You can also see that they're seemingly keeping up with the mute switch on the top left of the phone. Next up, you see a full on back and front display along with the side. And um, when you look at that front, it looks very eerily similar to what we got with some recent Galaxy phones and other phones that have been on the market as well with that punch hole for a camera underneath on top of the display. And then again, you see the top down view of the flush cameras along with the buttons on the side there. And then here's another view again showing off. You can see the flush cameras. The Apple logo will sit underneath the glass of the phone. You see on the right hand side of the phone, that's where you'll put your SIM card. And then you see the round buttons along with that other power button. Obviously it doesn't go too in depth with performance of the iPhone 14 Pro Max or if it's gonna have this or that in terms of software or you know again, just performance overall. It's really just a hardware look at the phone. I think the big takeaways are if you hated the notch, that seemingly is gone with the iPhone 14 Pro Max. Lightning charging is staying with the phone. It's not gonna just be wireless. It's not going to be USB-C either. The rounded buttons are gonna be on there the um, aluminum uh, chass titanium chassis actually all around the phone and you know the flush camera so i think you know is it enough reason to upgrade probably especially if you're wanting and to have a completely different feeling and looking iphone this is probably what you're going to want to wait for wait out this year and then go to the iphone 14 pro max that said let's jump into the tech News first story of the day is a deal on this phone, the Galaxy Z Fold 3, and also the Galaxy Z Flip 3, and a good, good deal. I'm talking great deals on these two phones, because if you're looking to buy these phones and you don't want to pay the top amount of money, this is going to be, again, a fantastic deal to, to jump on right now. So the phones are unlocked, which is another great point. So unlocked versus not unlocked is going to be you're not going to get any of the carrier bloatware. You're going to get the phone just the way Samsung has intended, plus the phone when you either quit that service or if you, whatever, bring it to another country. All you can do is pop the SIM card out, put a new SIM card in, and it will work with every carrier here in America and basically almost anywhere in the world as well. So with that said, let's jump into this deal. It's going on at Best Buy, and you can pick up a Galaxy Z Flip 3 for as little as $799.99. Now, it's the unlocked version, but right when you buy the phone, you do have to activate it on your carrier. So basically, if you're on AT&T, T-Mobile, Verizon, Sprint, one of those carriers, all you gotta do is activate it right when you're at the store on their network and you're good to go. You can use it and you'll only pay $799.99. You can also do your trade in as well if you want, if you have a phone to trade in to Best Buy and get even more money off. Or you can go the Z Fold 3 route and get this phone for as little as $14.99.99. Again, it's the unlocked version and it's the 256 and you just have to activate it right then and there when you get the phone. This isn't a, that's not a big deal. You're literally gonna activate it anyway on your carrier when you get it. So if you wanna take advantage of these deals, they're going on right now. I'm not exactly sure how long they're going on. So I, if you're on the fence of doing it, jump on it right then and there um, and try it out. It's a great phone. Both of them are really, really great phones. I know a lot of people love the Flip 3. I'm more uh, on the Fold 3 line because I think it's a, a, pro, a phone that fixes a problem and it's more exciting than the Flip 3, but still, you really can't go wrong with either one. Last story of the day is a little bit of good news potentially for Galaxy Note fans. If you remember a couple of days ago, we had a story where Samsung had registered trademarks for a bunch of their phones, and it, this was it, that was the trademark. So the Galaxy S, Galaxy Z, Galaxy M, and the Galaxy A phones, and we did not notice the Galaxy Note phone on there at all, and so we assumed, which I guess you should never assume because it makes a A out of you and me, we assumed that, you know, since there wasn't on this list that it's probably going away and we will never see it again. But there's some light at the end of this tunnel because there's more to this story at this point. So let's dive right into what we found out today. Now this tweet comes from Front Tron and uh, his words are a little bit, not vulgar, but they're a little bit 
I don't know, aggressive. Ice Universe tweet about their renewed trademark of Galaxy was misleading and tricked most people you cannot in infer to the conclusion that there will be no longer a Note device in the future with these trademark registrations. Note that I wrote registrations, not renewals. And in a, another tweet, he puts that the Galaxy Note was filed back in 2011 and it was registered in 2013, meaning its expiry is next year. So no need to renew this year. Galaxy S, Z, M, and A were never filed before. So this is a new filing. Check the application date. It is not being renewed. It is just new. So if you're a Note fan, there seemingly is a little bit of light at the end of this tunnel, like I said. Doesn't mean that we're definitely gonna get a Note phone this year or next year. It just means that the, the registration of this phone is still active, and that's why it didn't show up on that original list. Uh, I still don't think they're gonna release that phone. I, I think they're trying to consolidate and make things cheaper overall. If you look at their phones and the way they're doing things, they're really not pushing the spec envelope. They're really not releasing I mean, they, they still have a lot of flagship phones when you, when you consider the Z line and the S line and then the Note line even last year. They still had a lot of, of phones on the market, but I feel like they're consolidating that. They're not putting as high as specs as they could in some of these phones. So I think overall, I think some of the things that they're doing indicate that the Note line is still probably dead. Now, and for you guys, I hope I'm wrong, but I don't think I am. Our first story of the day is about a flip phone that was going to come out and it was gonna be cheaper than the Galaxy Z Flip 3 by a couple hundred bucks. And it looked really, really cool. Maybe even, I think, maybe even cooler than the Z Flip 3 looked overall. But alas, it doesn't look like it's going to come out. Maybe not now, maybe ever, or maybe if it does in the future, it will. But regardless, check this out. So this is the TCL. Chicago. And CNET wrote an article, but we're gonna use Joshua Swingle's little tweet here because it's so nicely packed, saying, TCL had a foldable called Project Chicago ready to launch, but killed it before unpacked because it couldn't compete with Samsung. It wanted to offer a cheaper alternative, but the cheapest it could make it was about 800 bucks. And you can see it has a lot of the same features that a Galaxy Z Flip 3 does, AKA sitting up, doing sit-ups, you know, com closing completely, it had the ability to hold itself up like a tent. Um, and when compared to Rivals Project, Chicago's crease was actually less noticeable on the display versus its competitors. Also, it was thicker, wider, and heavier than the Z Flip 3, all of which I'm okay with, especially if the battery was bigger and the screen is bigger, obviously, as well. Uh, this front screen is smaller, too. It used the inferior, uh, Snapdragon 765G, and it was not water resistant. In a statement on the matter, TCL said, although the foldable market is growing each year, it is still a premium product category in combination with recent component shortages, the COVID-19 pandemic, and rising cost in foldable production. TCL has made the difficult decision to suspend the launch of its first commercial available foldable phone until the phone can, until the company can produce and bring it to market at a price point that's accessible to as many consumers as pop possible. And here's a couple of official TCL Project Chicago renders. Here it is with it, um, you know, completely wide open and showing you a little bit of a display on the back there and ultimately the back cameras. Here it is with it closed and then completely wide open. And remember, it's a wider display, which I'm, I'm totally down for. Um, why not? You know, you're going to get more screen real estate. Now, the good thing is they will be working on foldable and flip phones in the future and be releasing them. The time frame is unknown. Next up, if you have the Galaxy Watch 4 Classic or Galaxy Watch 4, there is an update that's about 160 megs go and download it. You have to go into the Galaxy wearable app on your phone and you should be able to download it and take advantage of the update. It's supposed to really just help with the overall functioning of um, the rotating bezel and just kind of bug fixes. I didn't really notice anything too dramatic, but go there, get it, why not? And the last story of the day is you guys have been asking for it. I hear it all the time 
from you guys about wanting a case that will hold the S Pen. Some of you have gone, have gone out and just completely made your own. Some of you bought or got this case like me, which is from Samsung, and it's got this nasty little flap that hangs over, and it's just not a great case overall in your hand. Some of you like it, most of you hate it. With that said though, we now have a third party solution coming and it's from Spigen. Check this out, it's available. You can order it right now, I'll link it down below. It's 45 bucks. Um, delivery won't happen till about the first or second week of October. But again, this will hold the S Pen in place for your phone and Spigen makes awesome cases. So this might be right up your alley and it's only about less than a month away now that you'd have that case in your hand linked down below. This is a yo-yo guys. We're on a yo-yo with the Galaxy Note here. It's going up, it's going down, it's saying yes, it's saying no, it's been cancelled, it's been reinstated. We've been everywhere with this phone, at least from the news anyway. Samsung obviously hasn't officially come out and said really too much about this product. The latest we heard, because we heard first that they didn't uh, 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 trademark the device name, and then the next day we found out that it didn't need to be trademarked, that it'll be trademarked next year. And that's the latest we're at. And we don't really know if this phone's coming out. We've seen S Pens on the Galaxy Z Fold 3, we've seen S Pens on the S21 Ultra, and it looks like it's gonna be on other phones as well come this in the, in the future. Where does that leave us right now on the yo-yo? Very good news, very, very good news. This is a tweet from Ice Universe that says, someone in the supply chain has seen evidence of the existence of the next generation Galaxy Note. And remember, a lot of this information that's coming out is stuff that's hearsay, I meaning like, yeah, someone heard this, someone heard that. We don't fully know, but it's an exciting, like I like that, I like the drama of all this, going back and forth, it's exciting, why wouldn't it be? If it wasn't exciting, you guys wouldn't watch, and you know, I wouldn't, be interested in it, so I am. So it looks like the Galaxy Note, per his tweet, is in line to be released. I still feel like it's gonna be not released. And that's, that's my bet. Maybe I'll be wrong, but I'm guessing that we're gonna see this phone. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, it sounds like we're gonna see this phone based off some of this information that's been leaked out, especially from this tweet. Exactly when, we don't know. Um, that's, and that, I think that's the biggest telltale signs, because like, when are they gonna release this phone? Is it gonna be in the fall? Is it going to be in the middle of the year? Like when would they actually release, say the Galaxy Note 22 or Note, whatever they end up calling this phone? When are they gonna release it? That's, I don't know, I, I would, maybe August? Who knows? Because they have all the, the fold, foldable and the flip phones, maybe it'd just be too much. So I would guess if they do release this, I think it would be the smartest thing would be to release it kinda maybe in the spring when they don't really have a major phone at that point. Let's jump into the stories about the new iPhone 13. So if you remember, the 13 series is going to have some changes with it. Now, not huge changes, but changes overall. Now, with that said, what are you looking at for storage amounts for these phones? So it looks like the storage amounts that you're gonna be able to get, because it looks like they eliminated 64 gigabytes from their lineup. iPhone 13 mini and 13 will go from 128, 256, and 512 gigabytes of storage. And then the 13 Pro and 13 Pro Max will have 128, 256, 512, and one terabyte. And when you look at that, I think most people will probably end up going for the 128. And then I think the second most popular will probably be 256. Can't see a lot of people going after the 512 and one terabyte. I know some people will, but I think the greater majority is 128 to 256. I will probably be in the 256 gig model maybe. 128 I have on this and it's actually done me pretty fine because I don't use it all that much. Um, when I do, it's usually for like B-roll and I haven't used this as my B-roll camera in quite some time, but I'll definitely be in that 128 or 256. Definitely nothing more uh, than 256. But what about you guys? For anyone that's getting the iPhone 13s, what size and which exact model will you get? I'm gonna get the 13 Pro Max. Next up, Mark Gurman, who is a Apple leaker news guy of sorts, and he had put out a tweet, it seems like, or some information that the Galox had put together in a nice little tweet for us to use, showing the iPhone 13 upgrades over the iPhone 12. So the iPhone 13 will have new camera software features, whatever that ends up meaning, a faster A15 processor, 
LTPO display, which is the same kind of display that are on the new Galaxy phones. And they will feature likely a high refresh rate, AKA 120 Hertz on the pro models only. And also you're gonna get some, uh, same design, but with a narrower notch. So a smaller notch now, but with the same design on the phone and satellite features for emergency communication. I'm very curious what they mean by satellites. Is it actually going to communicate with satellites up in the air, like kind of like those satellite phones do where you can make phone calls from basically anywhere? I highly doubt that, but who knows? Maybe they will have some kind of chip built into there. So, I mean, you know, you're looking at something like that and it's not like that exciting. I think the most exciting piece of technology in there is probably that high refresh rate in the displays. And then beyond that, obviously you always want something a little bit faster, even though the phones are already fast on the iPhone side and most everywhere else. New camera software probably next, and then the notch, and then that emergency communication, because how often are you gonna actually need that? But some cool stuff in there, not a huge, amazing, upgrade, but something to, you can kind of look forward to. Thanks for watching guys. Your question of the day before we get into the questions is, what do you think is the most exciting feature that the new iPhone 13s are getting? Put it in the comments down below. With that said guys, let's get into the Q&A portion of the video and drop that First question comes from Katz Kasem. Hi Greg, phones are getting better now. It's becoming more confusing what to buy. I was going to buy the full three, but now the Note 22 and S22 coming out now, I'm confused what to get. I'm using the S21 Ultra at the moment. Don't know if I should wait. What would you use as your daily driver, your next phone, or should I rather wait? Well, I think when you look at the Note 22 and S22 phones, they're gonna be very similar probably in what you get and have with the S21 Ultra. When you get something like a Z Fold 3, it's a completely different experience, a completely different phone. I would still tell you to get the Z Fold 3 even though the Note 22, if it ever comes out, and the S22 phones will most likely have better specs. But you could always, you could say, well, why don't you wait for the Z Fold 4? That'll have better specs than this, you would assume. So I would still tell you to get this phone just because if, you, if you've never had a folding phone, again, I always say it's like, it's an experience. It's something different. Give it a try. You don't like it. You can always upgrade the next year. Ronnie Thomas says, do you think Samsung should just run Dex or possibly Chrome OS on its tablets instead of Android? That is a really smart thing to say that it just like if you got a tablet that they put out that it would just run decks like that's awesome um I, I still think you need windows but if they sold a tablet that just ran decks or ran chrome os and decks i mean i'd probably buy it like i that's one thing i would want is a dedicated dex you know interface i know you can use it with your tablet, but you still have to buy the keyboard. And sometimes I, I don't really love the keyboards on the Samsung side. I like them better on the I, iPad side. So I would love to see something like that, like a dedicated Dex laptop. And I know there's like accessory things you can buy, but it's it's not the same. Like I want a dedicated Dex laptop. That would be awesome. I agree with you. That would be pretty cool. Vincent Water says, do you expect Samsung to announce any kind of upcoming AR smart glasses tech to try and counter Apple's move in that direction? I think you will. I'm surprised we haven't heard anything in that way. We've seen stuff that's, I think we're, and I also think we're getting that way. I think that, that when I always forget probably, but that would probably be the next piece of tech that I absolutely love is some kind of smart glasses or smart sunglasses that I can wear, that I can possibly watch videos out of, read my notifications, emails, look at my screen, see who someone is like with a built-in camera like we'd be like oh that's your friend on facebook blah 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 or that's your friend on blah 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 or that maybe if i didn't even know the person maybe you show me a profile of them through my glasses like that is the future that's we need to get to that i know a lot of people are concerned with privacy because of some of the stuff that that would be able to do i wouldn't be that worried about it you know i'm already I'm not like famous but i'm a somewhat public feature fe uh, figure having a, a, ch a channel on here and you know obviously I'm throwing myself out there, but so I really wouldn't be worried about someone walking by me and be like, oh, that's Greg and his, he's this and this and that. Like I, if I, stuff I wanted to share, I wouldn't be worried about that. So I'd love to see Samsung do something with that space. Will they? Yes. When will they? I'm not really sure. I would expect 
this year or I'm sorry, next year or the year after we'll probably see something from them, but hopefully they do it soon because it's, it's a tech I'm totally into. Zane Uden, I have the 21 Ultra and Z Fold 3, hate carrying around two S Pens. Would it be wise to get the S Pen Pro? I'm just concerned that it's a bit long, big to fit in a jeans pocket and I was so close to returning my Z Flip 3 like you, but decided to keep it. That's a, a fair question to ask and I think you are on the right path of saying, I don't want to hold two S Pens, What's the alternative? And I think it is the S Pen Pro. That way you can sync it with both of them. You have the Bluetooth functionality on there. I still think you'll be able to fit it into your jeans. And if you carry a bag with you, uh, a man purse or some kind of thing, um, you could do that. But yeah, I think that's a smart idea. Go the S Pen Pro route and you know see if you can incorporate it into your life in terms of fitting it in your pocket or into a bag or even building some kind of self-made case that would hold it. And if you can, great. And if you can't, return it. And our last question comes from Robert. Anderson, are they still coming out with the Pixel Fold? If they do, how do you think it will compare to the Fold 3? We haven't heard that much about it. We heard that it was gonna come out towards the end of this year. That seems to not be happening. The real release date, from what I've heard, is early 22. But again, that's not real. It's just rumors that have been kind of floating around. And you would think it's not gonna come out this year because we haven't heard really anything about it. And we already know everything about the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro. So you would think that they're going to release this sometime next year, hopefully early next year. And then in terms of how it would compete with something like this, I think it would be very similar. But I would guess that the body of the phone and the cameras and how they sit and everything would be more similar to a Galaxy Z Fold 2. I think you wouldn't have any hidden cameras on the phone. I also think that software wise, it's obviously not gonna have Samsung software on there. It's gonna be a little bit different in that in that regard too, it's gonna to be their own kind of Google software, but I think it'll be a little bit different than what we see with just a plain old Google phone. And then spec wise, I think it's gonna be very similar to the 6 Pro. So I think you're looking at a high spec out phone, a phone that'll have slightly different software than the other Pixel phones, and then the cameras are just gonna to be top notch like any other Pixel phone. Thanks for watching guys. If you have a question, leave it in the comments down below with the word question, and I'll answer it. We'll see you guys down the road. Peace.